Wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Ralston present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! <laughs> In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy have trapped one of Prince Baccarati's spies in a sub-basement in Jupiter City. Cautiously, the spy presses a concealed button and slips through a secret opening. Commander, there he goes. Oh, it's no use, Happy. We can never break it down. That's right, Corey. You can't escape. Sirkin's voice is coming from that speaker up there. Sirkin, listen to me. You listen to me. I'm getting off this planet, Corey. Prince Baccarati tipped me off that a guided missile has been launched toward Jupiter City. There's nothing you can do to stop it. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, Target Jupiter. It's Saturday, gang, no school, and here's a bunch of Space Patrollers who have real big plans for this weekend. They're packing up for a camping trip out on the mountains. In go the tents. In goes the hiking equipment. Yes, sir, they're packing power and energy now with a big case of bite-sized rice checks and bite-sized wheat checks, those super cereals that help to supercharge you. And, gang, not only are rice checks and wheat checks the best-tasting cereals in the universe, but no other cereal, flaked or puffed, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized forms. Nourishment that adds up to more zip and bounce and sparkle for you. And Space Patrollers, September is better breakfast month. So now's the time to start pulling up to your table every morning and having yourself a better breakfast with bite-sized rice checks or bite-sized wheat checks. They're off, power-packed and ready for anything. They have their bite-sized checks today. Now, how about you? And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, Target Jupiter. Commander Corey has Prince Baccarati's chief henchman, Dr. Malengro, in custody on the planet Terra, following his capture on one of Saturn's moons. Baccarati managed to escape while Buzz and Happy were rescuing Malengro from a perilous situation into which Baccarati thrust the brilliant but corrupt Malengro. Following Commander Corey's instructions, Major Robertson is preparing to give Dr. Malengro a brainograph test to learn details of Baccarati's defenses on Planet X. Now, in the commander's central office, the dead happy is carefully adjusting the spaceophone receiver while Buzz reviews the few known facts about Baccarati's defenses. I think this ought to do it, Happy. Are you all ready to give Malengro the brain gap test, sir? Yes. Well, I mean, I have enough key questions here to bring out most of Malengro's knowledge of Baccarati's weapons. And also, if we're lucky, Baccarati's immediate plan. Yeah, I guess Malengro knows just about everything Baccarati plans to do. Oh, by the way, did you pick up that signal again, the, the one for me from outer space? Oh, no, sir, not again. If it was a patrol ship, they would have used one of the regular relay frequencies. It would have reached me through regular communication. Well, shut off the space phone. Let's go down to the brainograph chamber. Yes, sir. Calling Commander Corey at Terra headquarters. There it is, sir. Prince Baccarati on Planet X calling Commander Corey at Space Patrol headquarters, Terra. Baccarati? Let's see what he's up to now. Corey here. Go ahead, Baccarati. Just listen, Corey. This is a warning and an ultimatum. I want Dr. Malengro released immediately. That sounds a little ridiculous, Baccarati. Not long ago, you tried to kill him just so you could escape. I'm not speaking out of sentiment, Corey. Malengro has information about Planet X that would be inconvenient for you to know. I'm warning you, unless you put Dr. Malengro on the space phone and assure me that he will be returned to Planet X, I'll destroy Terra. Yes? How? This is no bluff, Commander. I can blast the guided missile into Terra and wipe out the capital of the United Planet. And I'll do it. You do that just to get Malengro back? Whether he comes back or not is up to you. If he goes under the brain of graph, I'll bless Terra apart before you can use that information against me. What are you going to do, sir? I'm going to use a feeling to a reason or reason again. Baccarati, do you take my word that Malengro has not been given a brain graph test? Uh, you might like to me to save Terra. Bring Malengro to the space of home. I want to hear it from him. All right, Dr. Roddy, I'll get him. One happy. Let's go over to the security lab and have Major Robertson release the language. Roger. 
Robbie. Oh, Commander, I'm glad you're here. Robbie, I just heard from Bakarati. We're going to blast Terra with a guided missile unless we return Malengo to Planet X immediately. I'm not sure that's possible. Have you started the treatments already? Well, no, sir. We didn't have a chance to start. So why? What's wrong? Malengo's in a deep coma, Commander. He evidently had some chemical concealed on him. Dr. Stevens and I have been working on him, trying to bring him to. Nothing we've tried has had any effect. He's practically in suspended animation, sir. Well, how's he going to talk to Bakarati? He can't. Well, come on, let's go back and get the news. It's a drink for me. You're lying to me. I'm not lying, Baccarati. Dr. Malengro has put himself into a state of suspended animation. Ah, oh, then he art with it, before. You might as well turn him over to me. Suppose I refuse. And I'll carry out my threat to destroy terror. If I send out a ship with Malengro on it, will you guarantee it's safe return? You mean you'll accept my word? I'll have to under the circumstances. I can't afford that luxury myself, Commander. How do I know you won't try to trick me? If you don't trust me, how are you going to get Malengo back? Put Dr. Malengo in a space and drop him out in space. I'll give you precise instructions. My men will pick up Malengo, and we are certain those space patrol ships are around. All right, Bakarati. Let's have the space coordinates. I'll return Malengo myself. True to his word, Commander Corey has Dr. Malengo placed in a spacesuit, and then he and Happy drop the unconscious man off in space as directed by Baccarati and head back toward Terra. I'm not sure we should get some information from Malengo while we had him. But maybe Baccarati couldn't have destroyed Terra after all. Well, maybe not, but I couldn't place thousands of people in danger just to hold Malengo. Major Robertson, Terra headquarters, calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Major Robertson to Commander Corey. Corey here. Go ahead, Robbie. We just picked up a brief message from Baccarati. He picked up Malengro. Good. But keep all space patrol ships on the alert in the terra perimeter. We can't trust Baccarati. Right, Commander. Well, we just received some interesting information from Jupiter headquarters. Within the past 12 hours, seven of Baccarati's spies have left Jupiter City. Do you know where they went? Well, two went to Saturn. One seems headed for Venus. The other four are still being tailed by our agents. What about Baccarati's men on Terra? Oh, no activity. At least among those we know about. Now, those seven who left Jupiter... Are they the only known spies on that planet? Oh, no, sir. There's uh, one more still in Jupiter City. And there are uh, three in Kepler City. Well, that man's still in Jupiter City. Who is he? Rupert Serkin. He claims to be a purchasing agent for outer planet space lines. And in the last year, he's paid out 200,000 credits to manufacturers. I see. The odd part of it is that outer planet hasn't placed that much business to Serkin. But Serkin is with outer planet lines. Yes, a minor official in the purchasing department. Outer planet space lines is on the up and up, all right. They voluntarily showed their books to our agents. And Serkin is using outer planet lines as a cover for someone else. Uh, Obviously, Baccarati. The way I've got it figured, Commander. The president of the company wanted to discharge Serkin, but our agents persuaded him to give him more rope. Good. Happy and I are going to Jupiter City. I want to find out what's keeping Serkin in town when Baccarati's other spies have left. A few hours later, in Jupiter City, Commander Corey reviews the files on Rupert Serkin and talks to the agent who has been watching the spy. Now, in civilian clothes, Buzz and Happy are strolling through a small park in the pleasant residential section of Jupiter City. Now, that's Serkin's apartment right across the street, Happy, on the ground floor on the left. Mm, nice place. Not too fancy. Well, it's just the sort of place a man with Serkin's position in a spaceship company should have. And a man's coming around the corner. And from the way he's stepping it off, he's in a hurry. It's Serkin. Apparently, his visit to Detective Fast Labs was a success. Let's find out. Yes, Mr. Serkin? Yes, what can I do for you? I'd like to talk to you inside, if you don't mind. Well, I'm rather busy, but come in. Thanks. Come on, Captain. Now, what was this in regard to, Mr. Um, Corey? You're with Outer Planet Space Lines, is that right? Yes. As a matter of fact, I'm working on an important deal for them right now. So if you'll please be brief, I'll appreciate it. Of course. The deal involves Tectoplast Lands. You've just come from meeting with their production supervisor, Franklin Delaport, I believe. Yes, we discussed the purchase of eight tons of Vedafoil, is that right? 
I was under the impression that my meeting with Delaport was a private business matter, Mr. Corey. Commander Corey of the Space Patrol. I assume you're aware that the government authorization you showed to Mr. Delaport was a forgery. Outer Planet Space Lines has never applied for a permit to buy Raider Foil. In just a minute. You know what Raider Foil is, don't you? I... Not exactly. You're a purchasing agent. Don't you know what you're purchasing? I buy thousands of different items and materials. I do it by lot number, by name, by code. All right, Happy. Tell Mr. Serkin what Raider Foil is. It's the only known substance that'll confuse Uscope beams. A spaceship covered with Raider Foil will bounce Uscope beams back in all directions and at reduced frequencies. Frequencies that the ordinary Uscope can't detect. All right, Serkin. Who do you know that would be interested in obtaining a large quantity of that substance? I don't run Outer Planet. Take it up with the top brass. I already have, Mr. Serkin. Outer Planet has no plans involving the use of Raider Foil. Mm. I don't understand. You're working for someone else besides Outer Planet. You've used several hundred thousand credits belonging to someone else to buy materials in the name of Outer Planet. I want to know who put up that money. Is it Prince Baccarati? Come on, is it? We know you're one of Baccarati's spies. You can save yourself a lot of trouble by telling us the whole story. All right, Commander. I guess it's no use. You and the other spies have been trailed ever since we picked up some evidence at Baccarati's communication center on Saturn's sixth moon. How do you contact Baccarati? In the sub-basement. The space apartment. All the records are there. I'll show you. All right, sir. Take us down there. Watch them happen. There's a concealed door here. Go on in, Serkin. You'll find most of the evidence in those filing cabinets. Uh -huh. Where's the space phone? There's a panel in this wall. It's another door. And it's my way out. Grab him, Happy. You're too late, Commander. <laughs> Happy, out the other door, quick. No, it's too late. Look for that secret patch on the side wall. It's not very well hidden. You can find it, but it won't do you any good. Serkin's voice coming from that speaker up there. Serkin, listen to me. No, you listen to me. You can't escape, Corey. The release mechanism works only for my fingerprints. You can stay in there the entire city is destroyed. What are you talking about? You probably know about Prince Baccarati's agents leaving Jupiter City, don't you? Yes, what about it? Prince Baccarati tipped us off that he was blasting a guided missile into the city at 1,500 hours, universal star time. That's less than half an hour from now. A guided missile? Where's he launching it from? One of Jupiter's moons. By this time, it's already on its way. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Here's a salute to the famous jet plane assigned to the vital Air Force mission of defending America's homeland, the F-94C Starfire, built by the Lockheed Aircraft Corporation, Burbank, California. Now, in just a moment, you'll hear from Tony LeVere, test pilot on the Starfire. Within seconds after warning, this radar-controlled interceptor can be off the ground and streaking to 45,000 feet or higher. Packing 48 rockets, it can fly and fight in sunshine or pitch darkness at speeds of more than 600 miles an hour. On landing, the Starfire can be brought to a quick stop by a parachute, which pops from its tail. And now, Tony LeVere. You know, good health is important to a test pilot, and I have to stay in top condition. I get lots of rest and eat plenty of good food. That's why I like a good cereal for breakfast, like rice checks or wheat checks. They have real energy, and they taste swell. Why don't you try them? No other cereal, puff or flake, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. Rice checks, wheat checks. Get some at your grocers today. <laughs> And now, back to our space patrol adventure, Target Jupiter. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have been locked in a sub-basement on Jupiter by one of Prince Baccarati's spies, who has told Buzz that a guided missile has been released from one of the Jupiter moons and will strike the city at 1,500 hours. Now, with less than 30 minutes in which to save the city from disaster, Buzz and Happy tried desperately to escape from their prison. <laughs> oh, uh, it's no use, Happy. What are we going to do, sir? If Circuit is right, there's a guided missile beelining for Jupiter City right now. Well, Circuit won't waste any time getting out of the city. Chances are he's headed for the spaceport. Maybe one of our agents will grab him, sir, and then he'll tell what's happening to save his own skin. Well, half an hour's warning, an ordinary guided missile might be stopped before it hits, but if it's covered with radar foil, it couldn't be detected. Well, do you think Baccarati could have got a hold of some radar foil already, sir? Well, that's possible. You know he ordered eight tons through Circuit. 
Well, we can't take a chance on Sirkin being caught. We've got to alert the space patrol. Well, then let's start hacking at the walls with that bar, sir. It's the only thing we can oh, do. Wait, have hold it. Look up there. Huh? Oh, a ventilator grating. Right. If we remove that grating, we might be able to crawl through to another part of Sirkin's apartment. Yeah. It'll be a tight squeeze, but well, give me a boost and we'll try. As Buzz and Happy tie loose the grating over the ventilator, Prince Baccarati and Dr. Malengro follow the deadly trajectory of a guided missile on a viewscope screen from a hideout on one of the 12 moons of Jupiter. It's on course, Your Highness. In 24 minutes, the missile will strike Jupiter City. It's too bad Sirkin can get the rest of those eight tons of razor foil off the pan in time. We could have used it. Perhaps it's just as well. Uh, you're right, Malengro. Sirkin wasn't inefficient, as I had hoped. At any rate, the rate of fall on this missile will get it through the Jupiter defense perimeter. Yes, unless a patrol ship gets directly on the stern of the missile the way we are, they'll never detect it. And even if they do, it will be receding from them. Anything they fire at it from that trajectory will hit Jupiter City, too. Back in Jupiter City, Buzz and Happy work their way inch by inch through the ventilator pipe. Finally, at a turn in the conduit, Happy calls back to the commander. I reached the grating, sir. From what I can see, it looks like the main entrance. Good. See if you can force the grating. Yes, sir. Oh, I can't budge it, sir. I keep slipping back into the vent. I've got my legs braced in the turn. I'll hold your feet in my hand. All set? Now, push. I think it's giving way, sir. Yes, I did it, sir. I can crawl out now. Good boy. I'll give you a hand. We're coming out right by the main entrance, Commander. As soon as you're out, rush for the street, Hap. If you get a surface cab, you can alert Space Patrol headquarters before we reach the space. Rushing out of Rupert Serkin's apartment, Buzz and Happy hail a passing surface cab. Issuing commands through the cab's spaceophone, Buzz alerts the Jupiter Defense Squadron. A few moments later, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are spaceborne over Jupiter in the Terra 5. Simultaneously, around the Jupiter Defense perimeter, view scopes are trained on the 12 moons. And as computers go into operation, the sensitive space monitors are trained on the four moons from which missiles could be successfully launched to strike Jupiter City at 1,500 hours. From his spaceship, Buzz establishes contact through space control with several patrol ships. And then, as Happy Monitor's view scope scanner, Buzz checks with the Jupiter City headquarters. Men Corey aboard Terra 5, calling Major Robertson. Robbie here. Go ahead, Commander. Can you give me a report from Central Analyzer as of 1500 minus 5 minutes? Oh, well, sure, Commander. Jupiter moons number 2, 5, 8, and 11 are now possible launching points. All others are eliminated. Check. Full ships report no objects and project from these moons. Commander, something funny in this view scope. Oh, just a minute, I'm happy. Go ahead, Robbie. We received reports of a strange interference signal from several patrol ships beamed toward moon number four. What kind of interference? Well, I can't explain it, sir, except to say it's like a big hole in the viewscope screen. Stars, other planets, everything blotted out. Wait a minute, that's just what's happening in our screen. The effect radar foil would make happen. Bobby, stand by for special orders. Standing by, sir. Some unknown object is headed toward Jupiter from moon number four. We can't locate it exactly because of radar foil interference. No one ship can pinpoint the source. I want all patrol ships to space a phone a signal when their view scopes are centered directly on this interference. By combining all the signals, we may be able to compute the exact vector. I'll relay your instructions, Commander. With a special signal, each ship of the squadron relays to Commander Corey the estimated center of the blurred view scope image. And as the data is received, the dead happy rapidly computes the trajectory. I sure hope this works, sir. Keep working, Hap. We're centering on the target. Stand by to fire space torpedoes. Standing by, sir. I put our ship on the theoretical vector of the guided missile, Hap. That bright dot in the view scope should be the guided missile. Fire number one. Well, that was a miss, Commander. The dot's still there. Fire two. Again, this is our last chance, Hap. If we miss this time, Jupiter City's finished. Fire three. We did it. The viewscope is clear. Not a second too soon, Hap. 
Did you have a chance to make a record of the trajectory of that missile? Yes, sir. It's on the instant. Run it back. We'll find out where it was wrong. Something went wrong, Malangro. The missile blew up before it hit Jupiter City. It was 50 miles short of its target. Malangro, you told me these missiles were foolproof. The space patrol must have hit it, Your Highness. With the radio foil interference, impossible. It was sure luck. It can't happen again. We can launch another missile at Jupiter City. No, wait. They'll expect that. Prepare a missile for Kepler City. But your highness, we can't hit Kepler City for moon number four, not till Jupiter revolves into position. Uh, Jupiter revolves very rapidly, Marengo. Get to work. I'll line the launching mechanism. But your highness, how about your agents in Kepler City? You don't want to destroy them, do you? Mm, uh, they may have information I can use. All right. We'll space upon them a warning to leave immediately. But don't tell them... Meanwhile, Commander Corey has ordered the extra patrol ships to return to their base at Jupiter City. Now, as he and Happy point the long, needle-nosed spaceship Terra 5 toward the capital of the planet Jupiter, a familiar voice booms from the space patrol. Major Roberts, Space Patrol Headquarters, Terra, calling Commander Corey aboard Terra 5. Corey here. Go ahead, Robbie. Hey, congratulations, Commander. We just heard you intercepted Baccarati's dose of death before it hit Jupiter City. Thanks, Robbie. I'm keeping regular patrols on the alert, though. He may try it again. Say, I uh, picked up some information you might be interested in, Commander. Baccarati's agents are leaving Kepler City. They are? Yeah, it seems to be a rush order, sir. What do you make of it? Well, it's hard to say, Robbie. Wait a minute. His agents left Jupiter City just before he launched that missile. Maybe Kepler City's next. It looks like it, Robbie. Yeah. Yes, sir. Have you completed that missile trajectory? Well, I'm not too sure of the results, sir. The, the radio pole makes it pretty hard to be precise. Where do you think it came from? Well, right now, it looks like moon number four, sir. Or, although it might be moon number six. Let's see the application plan. Yes, sir. Yeah. As far as Jupiter City is concerned, it could be even uh, that for Kepler City. Well, moon number six won't be in the right position for several hours yet, Commander. I'll check on four, but I'll order a squadron to patrol six just as a precaution. Robbie. Yes, Commander? Right now, it looks as though moon four is the launching site below the horizon from Kepler City at the moment, but in a few hours, it'll be in position. I'm going to order Squadron 3 to accompany me to moon number four. Everything ready, Dr. Malengo? Yes, Your Highness. I've computed the launching time. It's 18.27 and 43 and 8 seconds. Mm, it's uh, less than 10 minutes. Now, you're sure nothing will go wrong. It can't, Your Highness. Kepler City will be completely destroyed. Look. What's that interview, folks? A spaceship. What is it doing over this part of the moon? Your Highness, it's a space patrol ship. It's terrified. It's Commander Corey. I'm searching for it, Your Highness. And I'll fix him. I'll go into bits. Malango, don't fire at him just yet. I have an idea. Hold at this altitude, Happy. Yes, sir. Watch the viewscope carefully. Dr. Roddy's probably got the launching site camouflaged. Any time now, I could be blasting the missile toward Kepler City, according to my calculation. Uh -huh. We don't locate the launching site before blast off. The launching itself can show us where it is. I've got the space torpedo on the ready, Commander. With little luck, we'll be close enough to track the missile, whether it's coated with radar foil or not. Commander, look out! Wow! That was a space torpedo, Hat. Yeah, and was it close? Dr. Roddy must have seen it. Yes, he gave himself away by firing that torpedo. The launching site is on top of that peak. You're right, sir. I, I see it now. Terrific job of camouflage. If I hadn't seen the flash when the space torpedo was launched, I'd have missed it completely. Commander, look. There's a guided missile rolling out of the tunnel, right up to the launching chute. We're getting ready to fire it, Hap. We'll have to blast it. Stand by to fire space torpedo. Standing by, sir. Got to get into position before it's launched. Just this one ship after it. We could never locate it with a view scope. No, sir. Not with that radio fall on the hull. Fire, Hap. Direct hit, Hap. You destroyed the missile. Smoke and rocket, the entire peak is gone. Leveled flat. Well, I guess that takes care of Prince Baccarati for good. Does it? Uh, no. Doesn't it, sir? I don't know. I don't know. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Something strange is happening outside Commander Corey's private quarters. Say, it looks like someone's tiptoeing in. Well, now he's 
going through the commander's papers. Who is this ominous intruder? What can we be searching for in the quarters of the Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol? Someone else is coming. Happy. Oh, oh uh, hello, Commander. Uh, looking for something? Oh, well, I'm sorry, sir, but I, I heard you tell Major Robertson that the key to the greatest secret ever to be revealed on Space Patrol is here in your desk. And, well, I just had to know about it, but I can't seem to find it. Can't you, Happy? Well, maybe I'd better tell you. And you too, Space Patrollers. Believe me, it's really an exciting secret, a secret prize, the biggest prize ever given away to any boy or girl. And here in the desk, the key to that secret prize. A box of hot Ralston? I don't get it, Commander. Open the box, huh? Well, okay, sir. But I still don't see... Hey, there's a coin in here. A space coin. Right, Hap. And space patrollers, the swell-looking coin that you'll find in every box of hot Ralston is your opportunity to win a gigantic prize that no other boy or girl on Earth has ever owned. So go to your grocers right away. Get yourself some good hot Ralston, either instant or regular, in the new package with a picture of Cadet Happy or myself on the outside and the handsome space coin inside. Be sure to save that coin. And be sure you're listening to Space Patrol next week because you're going to find out all about the biggest prize ever given away to any boy or girl. Hmm. Next week on Space Patrol... The biggest prize ever given to any boy or girl. Wow. I'm going to get a box of Hot Ralston with the swell space coin right away. How about you? And now, a preview of next week's exciting space football adventure. Buzz and Happy are in a tunnel under the surface of Jupiter's fourth moon looking for Prince Baccarati. Cautiously, they stalk through compartment after compartment in the long, dimly lighted passage. I think there's another door up ahead there. Why are these compartments, I wonder? Keep air in the tunnel. In case either the end is open. Judging by the upward slope of the floor, we're not far from the end of the tunnel. Hit the ground, Hatter. It's a blast gun. Look at he sees. us. Shot that right over our head. Hand me the disintegrator before he fires again. Well, I dropped it when I hit the ground, sir. It's out of reach. Keep down, Hatter, so he can't see us. I've got you now, Corey. All i got to do is keep blasting the way till I hit you. <laughs> Be sure to join us again next week for the thrilling story, The Turn to Planet X, when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Debris. Other players were Bela Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Our thanks to the New Jersey State Fair Committee for awarding Space Patrol its coveted Blue Ribbon Award for the outstanding television and radio show of its type. The award will be on display at the New Jersey State Fair September 22nd through October 4th. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and good hot Wilson again present Space Patrol. Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story in your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.